Today is March the 31st. Today, we hear Job say, let me speak to God. Today, as we read through the Bible in a year, we'll look at Job chapters 12 to 15. Job 12 is Job's response to Zophar. Job 15, Eliphaz gives a second response to Job. But 13 and 14 appears to be kind of a new uh, uh, theme for Job. Now, in a very clear way, he says, let me speak to God. Job chapter 13, verse 3, as for me, I would speak directly to the Almighty. I want to argue my case with God himself. 18 and 19, I prepared my case. I'll be proved innocent. Who can argue with me over this? If you prove me wrong, I'll remain silent and die. Verse 22, summon me and I'll answer. Let me speak to you and you reply. Job now looks directly at God and says, God, I want to speak to you. I want to argue my case directly with you. Enjoy today as you read Job 12 to 15. Then Job spoke again, You people really know everything, don't you? And when you die, wisdom will die with you. Well, I know a few things myself, and you're no better than I am. Who doesn't know these things you've been saying? Yet my friends laugh at me, for I call on God and expect an answer. I am a just and blameless man, yet they laugh at me. People who are at ease mock those in trouble. They give a push to people who are stumbling. But robbers are left in peace, and those who provoke God live in safety, though God keeps them in his power. Just ask the animals, and they will teach you. Ask the birds of the sky, and they will tell you. Speak to the earth, and it will instruct you. Let the fish in the sea speak to you, for they all know that my disaster has come from the hand of the Lord. For the life of every living thing is in his hand, and the breath of every human being. The ear tests the words it hears, just as a mouth distinguishes between foods. Wisdom belongs to the aged, and understanding to the old. But true wisdom and power are found in God. Counsel and understanding are His. What He destroys cannot be rebuilt. When He puts someone in prison, there is no escape. If He holds back the rain, the earth becomes a desert. When He releases the water, they flood the earth. Yes, strength and wisdom are his. Deceivers and deceived are both in his power. He leads counselors away, stripped of good judgment. Wise judges become fools. He removes the royal robe of kings. They are led away with ropes around their waist. He leads priests away, stripped of status. He overthrows those with long years and power. He silences the trusted advisor and removes the insight of the elders. He pours disgrace upon princes and disarms the strong. He uncovers mysteries hidden in the darkness. He brings light into the deepest gloom. He builds up nations and he destroys them. He expands nations and he abandons them. He strips kings of understanding and leaves them wandering in a pathless wasteland. They grope in the darkness without light. He makes them stagger like drunkards. Look. I have seen all this with my own eyes and heard it with my own ears, and now I understand. I know as much as you do. You are no better than I am. As for me, I would speak directly to the Almighty. I want to argue my case with God himself. As for you, you smear me with lies. As physicians, you are worthless quacks. If only you could be silent. That's the wisest thing you could do. Listen to my charge Pay attention to my arguments. You are defending God with lies. Do you make your dishonest argument for his sake? 
Will you slant your testimony in his favor? Will you argue God's case for him? What will happen when he finds out what you are doing? Can you fool him as easily as you fool people? No, you will be in trouble with him if you secretly slant your testimony in his favor. Doesn't his majesty terrify you? Doesn't your fear of him overwhelm you? Your platitudes are as valuable as ashes. Your defense is as fragile as a clay pot. Be silent now and leave me alone. Let me speak and I will face the consequences. Why should I put myself in mortal danger and take my life in my own hands? God might kill me, but I have no other hope. I am going to argue my case with him. But this is what will save me. I am not godless. If I were, I could not stand before him. Listen closely to what I am about to say. Hear me out. I have prepared my case. I will be proven innocent. Who can argue with me over this? And if you prove me wrong, I will remain silent and die. O God, grant me these two things, and then I will be able to face you. Remove your heavy hand from me, and don't terrify me with your awesome presence. Now summon me, and I will answer. Let me speak to you, and you reply. Tell me, what have I done wrong? Show me my rebellion and my sin. Why do you turn away from me? Why do you treat me as your enemy? Why would you terrify a leaf blown by the wind? Would you chase dry straw? You write bitter accusations against me and bring up all the sins of my youth. You put my feet in stocks. You examine all my paths. You trace all my footprints. I waste away like rotting wood, like a moth-eaten coat. How frail is humanity! How short is life! How full of trouble! We blossom like a flower and then wither. Like a passing shadow, we quickly disappear. Must you keep an eye on such a frail creature and demand an accounting for me? Who can bring purity out of an impure person? No one. You have decided the length of our lives. You know how many months we will live and we are not given a minute longer. So leave us alone and let us rest. We are like hired hands, so let us finish our work in peace. Even a tree has more hope. If it is cut down, it will sprout again and grow new branches. Though its roots have grown old in the earth and its stump decays, at the scent of water it will bud and sprout again like a new seedling. But when people die, their strength is gone. They breathe their last, and then where are they? As water evaporates from a lake and a river disappears in drought, People are laid to rest and do not rise again. Until the heavens are no more, they will not wake up, nor be roused from their sleep. I wish you would hide me in the grave and forget me there until your anger has passed. But mark your calendar to think of me again. Can the dead live again? If so, this would give me hope through all my years of struggle, and I would eagerly await the release of death. You would call, and I would answer, and you would yearn for me, your handiwork, for then you would guard my steps instead of watching for my sins. My sin would be sealed in a pouch, and you would cover my guilt. But instead, as mountains fall and crumble, and as rocks fall from a cliff, as water wears away the stones and floods wash away the soil, so you destroy people's hope. You always overpower them and they pass from the scene. You disfigure them in death and send them away. They never know if their children grow up in honor or sink to insignificance. They suffer painfully. Their life is full of trouble. Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, A wise man wouldn't answer with such empty talk. You are nothing but a windbag. The wise don't engage in empty chatter. What good are such words? Have you no fear of God, no reverence for him? Your sins are telling your mouth what to say. Your words are based on clever deception. Your own mouth condemns you, not I. Your own lips testify against you. Were you the first person ever born? Were you born before the hills were made? Were you listening at God's secret council? Do you have a monopoly on wisdom? What do you know that we don't? What do you understand that we do not? On our side are aged, gray-haired men, much older than your father. Is God's comfort too little for you? Is his gentle word not enough? What has taken away your reason? 
What has weakened your vision that you turned against God and say all these evil things? Can any mortal be pure? Can any one born of a woman be just? Look, God does not even trust the angels. Even the heavens are not absolutely pure in his sight. How much less pure is a corrupt and sinful person with a thirst for wickedness? If you will listen, I will show you. I will answer you from my own experience. And it is confirmed by the reports of wise men who have heard the same thing from their fathers, from those whom the land was given long before any foreigners arrived. The wicked writhe in pain throughout their lives. Years of trouble are stored up for the ruthless. The sound of terror rings in their ears, and even on good days they fear the attack of the destroyer. They dare not go out into the darkness, for they fear they will be murdered. They wander around saying, Where can I find bread? They know their day of destruction is near. The dark day terrifies them. They live in distress and anguish like a king preparing for battle, for they shake their fists at God, defying the Almighty. Holding their strong shields, they defiantly charge against him. These wicked people are heavy and prosperous. Their waist bulge with fat, but their cities will be ruined. They will live in abandoned houses that are ready to tumble down. Their riches will not last, and their wealth will not endure. Their possessions will no longer spread across the horizon. They will not escape the darkness. The burning sun will wither their shoots, and the breath of God will destroy them. Let them no longer fool themselves by trusting in empty riches, for emptiness will be their only reward. They will be cut down in the prime of life. Their branches will never again be green. They will be like a vine whose grapes are harvested too early, like an olive tree that loses its blooms before the fruit can form. For the godless are barren. Their homes, enriched through bribery, will burn. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. Their womb produces deceit. Scripture reading from the New Living Translation by Emily Herrera. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see the almost split.